Chair recognizes the Honourable the Member for Harbour Grace Portagrave. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It certainly is great to be back, and it certainly is very important to speak to such a PMR as this one. But I will start by saying that whether we think we can or whether we think we can't, we are right. I am a strong believer that what we think about, we can bring about. So again, I'm very pleased to speak to this private member's resolution, and I am committed to doing as much as I can in my role as MHA, a citizen of my community, and a woman, to do as much as I can to help encourage, promote, and help guide every woman in my district and across our province, every woman who comes to my door or makes a phone call to me, I certainly will do everything I can within my role to help make their goals reality. But as we know, and as my colleagues just mentioned, women are still a minority in many professions, especially here in politics. I mean, look no further than our own Newfoundland and Labrador legislature. As we look around the room, we have 40 elected, uh, elected officials here in the room, and only 10 of those are women. So that, so that certainly needs to change. But we are here today, of course, to promote and to urge our government and to ensure increased particip participation of women in leadership roles and political roles. I guess I'll, I'll tell my story. I am very proud, of course, uh, and proud of my district, and proud to say that I've become the very first female MHA to be elected here in, the, in, well, in my area of what was port grave but now the district is Harbour Grace port grave I'll talk about my nomination. Um, back, uh, I guess it was 2000, just following 2013, uh, names started coming forward and, and we saw the interest come forward for nominations across the entire province. But in my particular district, which was port grave at the time, there were six candidates and two of those were women. It was certainly a long, drawn-out battle, um, lots of campaigning, uh, lots, lots of running around promoting, uh, meeting with as many organizations as I possibly could. And, uh, you know, I was up against some, some tough competition. Actually, there were two particular candidates uh, who, were, who were running for this nomination who came from big political families in the area. But uh, fortunately, I, we, you know, with the support of my, my family, my, my friends, and everybody who came together uh, for me, I managed to pull out that win to become the actual the, the nominee for the, for the area. And I'm proud to say that the other female uh, nominee, or who ran for the nomination, rather, Ms. Ms. Catherine Crane, came forward and she became a prominent member of my campaign team and is still very supportive today. And uh, I want to mention how important that is, how important it is for us women you know, to stick together. I mean, we, we see, I'll use the example of reality shows that we, we see on television, such as Survivor or Big Brother. I'm sure uh, some of us watch those. I know I do uh, when they come on. But we notice, even, even in reality shows, in such shows like this, the women, they, they don't tend to stick together. And they, they, they're you know, quickly picked off <laughs> in these shows. But it, it's something worth noting that you know, we have to support one another to become successful. And we achieve the greatest results by working together. But having said that, um, throughout my life, I've had some great role models, um, some support from, from men, of course. I'll, I'll name, actually, when I did secure the nomination, uh, my colleague, the Minister of Justice, was uh, very supportive of me, uh, I must say, and, you know, and did everything he could to help and to promote, came to the district. And, I mean, that's a great example. You know, we, we've got a lot of great male colleagues here in our caucus and even across the floor over there with, with our all-party committees and whatnot. But again, it, I, am, and I am very proud to say that it, it is a first for the District of Harbour Grace, Port of Grave. Also, to highlight some powerful women in leadership roles in my district, uh, it was a past president of the, party of, uh, the Liberal Party of Newfoundland and Labrador, Ms. Judy Morrill, who was a very, very strong lawyer in the area. And of course, as we know, Judy uh, is a very strong personality, and she certainly gets the job done. But the beginning of my journey began of course, with my very first support system, and that, that being my family, my immediate family, my mom and my dad and my sister, and my two grandmothers in particular. My nanny Healy, I'll, I'll talk about, who just passed away recently, was a mother, uh, she had 13 children. That in itself, I, I call that leadership. I mean, to raise a family of 13 children and, you know, who've all managed to, uh, to do okay in life and to become good people and good members of the community. And I, I must say, now perhaps my grandmother was a bit biased. I mean, she stood by me throughout my political journey as well at the beginning of the nomination and through the election. She was with me that night of the election as, those, as the votes were coming in and, and also during the nomination as the numbers were coming in. And in her eyes, I could do no wrong. Maybe she was a bit biased, but I will never forget her unconditional support. And every time she looked 
looked at me, um, whether you know when I was travelling to university in Halifax, or whether it be something I was doing in high school at Ascension Collegiate in Bay Roberts, and then when I embarked on my political journey, just that look she had in her eyes every time she looked at me, you know how encouraging that was, and it was just this this never this never doubting, never ending faith that she had that in me that I that I could certainly do whatever I really put my mind to. So uh, certainly. Uh, that will, that will stay with me for the rest of my life. But uh, certainly by my mother, my own mother, I was encouraged to strive and to do the best I possibly could in everything I put my hand to, especially in my academics. I mean, my, my mother was adamant about everything I did in school, how important it was to study and, and you know, to have plans going forward for what I wanted to do when I finished high school and whatnot. She would consistently remind me to do my homework. Um, you know, and to study the lessons of the day, and, and also in music. I, mean, I was fortunate enough, my sister and I, Erin, we were fortunate enough to have parents, you know, who encouraged us to be involved in extracurricular activities, especially music. And I certainly believe that anything that parents can get their young children involved in, daughters, it certainly contributes to the, to the character they become and, and to their confidence going forward. I mean, every opportunity to, to speak in front of a crowd or to, you know, to get out there and to learn how to play a musical instrument or, or figure skating. I was a figure skater uh, growing up. I wanted to play hockey was my true desire, but back in that time, in the late 80s, I guess early 90s, it wasn't necessarily common for young women to play hockey, especially in the minor hockey associations. So at first I figure skated but then at age 13 I started playing hockey and, and I, at 30, age 36 I still play today and, and I love it and now it's, it's so refreshing to see young girls coming up through the minor hockey. We've had amazing hockey players uh, come from my area. I'll name one, Miss Ashley Drover of Bay Roberts who went away to the United States on a hockey scholarship. Um, the same as uh, actually my, uh, my, my uh, teammate, uh, Miss Peggy Wakeham who also traveled I think to Vermont and uh, went on a hockey scholarship and she plays in the league and, and, and certainly that is a leadership role. She's also a referee in many of the leagues in, in the metro area and Conception Bay North. So sports also certainly contribute. And I can't talk about figure skating and not mention uh, our Newfoundland Labrador zone. Of course, Caitlin Osmond, who is now leading us on, on the national stage, international stage, doing so well. And, and, and again, it's, it's a leadership role. And these young children, I have a young figure skating coming up through my district by the name of Miss Jenna Effort. She's outstanding. I mean, she travels now outside of the province and throughout the, throughout the country and, you know, to, really, to really contribute to her, to her skill. And again, these are, these are true leadership roles and skills. Um, lots of encouragement for young girls to play, as I mentioned. Sports is, is really huge to, to increase confidence in young girls coming up. Also in high school, I mean, I, I guess it was my type, type personality. I'm, I'm, I've always been driven. Um, I, I think I was born this way. The moment I came into the world, I, I, just, I just, whatever I saw or whatever I wanted, I set my sights on and I was determined, you know, to go after. Um, I'll take my university career, for example. I happened to be a political science major, and it was in my courses, I guess, you know, learning about Pierre Elliott Trudeau, as I've mentioned before, then I decided, you know, this is something I really want to do throughout my life at some point in time in my career, you know, to put myself out for public office. And then during my summer jobs, again, I was a, I was a tour guide on the Harbor Hopper in Halifax, and then that was an outgoing role that you, you know, you're speaking all the time, you're meeting people. So again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is you know, to push yourself, to push yourself out of those comfort zones and, and to speak and to put yourself in front of crowds as much as possible. I attended um, university at Mount St. Vincent University in Halifax, and actually the Mount has about an 80% female enrollment. So th that university, there's about 80% uh, female, but ironically, the major I selected, political science, I was a minority, there were mostly men in, in my major, in my, in my uh, department there for political science. I then went on to study journalism at uh, King's Tech in Nova Scotia in the Annapolis Valley. And I remember uh, le lessons from, and lectures from my, from my then professor, Yvonne Colbert and uh, Jan McKinnon, who were both players in the industry prior to becoming instructors. And uh, I remember learning, of course, about the stereotypes and the boundaries that we would then even have to overcome and face as journalists. Um, I'll never forget my uh, instructor saying that, uh, you know, men, typically have, have an easier time in broadcast roles. I'll use the example uh, for body types and, and body size. It was said by my professor that a man can get away with being a bit overweight as opposed to a woman on television. 
And I mean, you know, it's a, whether it's right or it's wrong, it's a, it's unfortunate, but we see we see examples of it. Um, but I'll never forget that. And I remember thinking, you know, wow, you know, that's the first time you know I've heard that said. But uh, you know, it's it's I guess it's a smack in the face in, in a way. But uh, having said this, as I've gone through my uh, my schooling career, my academic career, there were some fantastic women um, in leadership roles at the CBC where I've done uh, where I've done my uh, my school internships. I'll use example for CBC Halifax, Miss Nancy Waugh. She took me in, um, you know, set me up for my first internship. She was the producer of CBC TV in Halifax, and I must say she was she was very admirable. And uh, it was great to see a woman, you know, lead that team, that news team. She was a leader. Um, of course, our very own Debbie Cooper here at CBC, a host, been a host for a long time, host here at CBC here and now. Um, my, that was my first journalism job when I returned to Newfoundland and Labrador following my, my school career. And Debbie was so kind to me. I actually sat next to Debbie in the newsroom and she was always very helpful and you know encouraging and, and I, I can't say enough about her. Marilyn Boone was also a producer over at CBC and it's great again to see women in these, in these roles. Kathy Porter of uh, CBC Radio was also the, the boss, as, as we like to say. But again, I have to mention here a man who did have a, a big impact on my career, my journalism career, and that's Mr. the late John Furlong. Um, he, being a man, he was out, but he was very, very encouraging, um, and, he, and he did everything he could to reach out to a young journalist like, like myself, and you know, to give me a chance and to give me opportunity and to kind of teach me some tricks of the trade. So there are some wonderful men, as I've mentioned, you know, who do have a have a great lasting impact on the people we become. And look no further than our own Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I mean, when questioned by the media about why Justin, you know, wanted to put equal representation of women in his cabinet, uh, than men, I mean, what was his reply? Because it's 2016. That's what it was at the time. So that's that's refreshing, you know, to see you know our Prime Minister, you know, of course lead that. I mean, it's and it's and it's and it made headlines. It made news across our country, throughout our provinces and whatnot. But also in our own, very own districts, it's, I have a lot of great women as well, but not enough. We need, again, I can't emphasize enough, we need more women in, at every level of politics, municipal, provincial. Um, also, uh, throughout my district, we're starting to see more women become involved in such as firefighting, volunteer firefighting. Um, the Spaniards Bay volunteer, volunteer Fire Department has now more women coming forward. There's one uh, woman on the, the Upper Island Cove volunteer squad, of course, uh, Miss Becca Mercer, I, I commend her. She's the only girl there, but we want to see more of that. And we have women, and also I, I have to name uh, Miss Sonia Williams of Harbor Grace, who's also a town councillor and a volunteer firefighter. So, I mean, it's refreshing to see these women in leadership roles, but we need to see more, you know. Look, each town council, they may have one or two women. So everything we can do. And colleagues, it's our obligation and it's our responsibility as MHAs. You know, we are role models. We, we, it's our duty to make ourselves accessible to the people in our districts and to do everything we can. I know I, I enjoy taking every opportunity, you know, to get to a school, uh, you know, whether it's to talk with young people then and, and to really, you know, really tell these children. And it was told to me, I remember, Tony Marie Wiseman visited Ascension Collegiate uh, when I was a student at Ascension. And, you know, she made an impression on me and I will say another powerful woman in, in a leadership role here. Tony Marie has been you know the face, a prominent face at NTV for quite some time and again when I when I worked with T Tony Marie at Newfoundland, in Newfoundland Broadcasting Corporation uh, again she was very uh, helpful and, uh, and and it's refreshing to see. So I can't you know encourage us enough I mean men and women we need to get out there we need to get on the ground you know meet with our organizations I know I do and I certainly enjoy it you know throughout our districts at every opportunity to be accessible to talk to our school groups um, as young as you know primary school I, I often visit Coley's Point Primary School in my district and I have a lot of bright young students who I'm very proud of there I will do everything I can to, pr to promote their education to promote their confidence you name it I will certainly do it and again, look around the, around the room here that we have. We have a lot of great women here in our very own legislature. Of course, we can't name them by name, but by district. Uh, you know, Cartwright Lance Clear, the member, started off this PMR, and she's going to close it. That's great. Uh, you know, we've got the, the Minister of Ch uh, Children, Social Development Seniors. <laughs> <laughs> Not right in that order, but of course, and of course, over here in Buren Grand Bank, Harbor, Maine, right next to me, across the way, uh, St. John's Kitty Vitty, St. John's Center, and Fortune Bay, Cape Lahoon. Woohoo!
And where's and, oh, that, and Miss, yeah, absolutely, our finance minister. I, I missed her there, of course. We so we have and, she, and the minister of natural resources. So we have a lot of great women here, and, and I know I know these girls. Should I say the girls and myself? We are committed, you know, to doing everything we can to promote this. So I certainly look forward to the cooperation of each and every member here in this wonderful House of Assembly uh, to support this uh, private member's resolution. We need to do as much as we can, of course, to, you know, and maybe someday we'll look across the room and we'll have an even keel. Maybe we'll have a balance of 50-50 of uh, female MHAs along with our strong colleagues, our male colleagues. So again, thank you. It is a privilege to speak to this uh, resolution. Always great to stand up here and, re and represent the great district of Harbor Grace, Port Grave. I will take my seat and I look forward to seeing the cooperation of all members here today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah.